Welcome into Live It Up with Leah and Krista. We are so excited to have you watching today, and we're super giddy about having this guy with us. If you don't recognize this handsome face by chance, <laughs> you will definitely recognize his voice. We have Mr. Matt LePay with us, who is the voice of the Badgers, and the announcer for UW Football and UW Basketball. You have your plate Yay! full. I do, I oh do. My yeah, excuse my groggy appearance here today. A late night game before we started taping this. And thanks for the handsome reference. Usually I'm, yes. I'm on the radio for a reason, so they, they always <laughs> tell me I have the face for it. So. Oh my gosh. But thank you, I appreciate oh, that. You're <laughs> so welcome, you're adorable. And everybody recognizes your voice. You're like the voice for sports like Morgan Freeman or <laughs> <laughs> is for um, voiceovers for Hollywood. So if Hollywood starts calling, you'll let us know. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, <laughs> especially in the middle of winter. I'm gone. So okay. it's a uh, secret time. Yeah. We'll yeah. go on your private yeah. jet, my man. That's, it's right. That's yeah. right. It'll all be good, right? Exactly. Oh, my gosh. How did you get started um, in sports broadcast? It was always something that I had wanted to do. I think in my world, I tried to be realistic enough to know that by the time I got to high school, I wasn't really going to be able to play professional. I was mm -hmm. I played baseball basketball okay. uh, like most kids you try to play all the sports but I was pretty realistic and I had a feeling that my career was probably going to end sooner than later as far as being an athlete I thought for a little bit about coaching but long story short not good enough to play not smart enough to coach but I thought <laughs> well we'll describe what's happening I've always had a love of broadcasting growing up in Ohio um, I was a big baseball fan growing up, loved mm -hmm. baseball broadcasters, yeah. and I just kind of caught the bug and thought, boy, what a, what a fun way to make a living. There's no heavy lifting, oh, yeah. and you get to travel, yeah. you get to see, and it's, uh, you work different hours, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, but I thought, this it sounds like something that would be working for a living, so I got lucky, and it's turned oh, out pretty God. well for me. Oh my gosh, lucky and a lot of talent. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's super exciting for me, so I gotta give you a high five, my man. With broadcasting being the legit way to uh, enjoy your life and your passion, and you're very good at it. And so yeah. uh, I'm super excited to hear too um, how you think broadcasting has changed. Yeah, it's been, um, some of the changes I think have been good and some not so good. It's become more corporate now. If you mm, can yeah. be with a family owned operation, I think first you're the exception to the rule and B, that's a good thing for mm -hmm. you. It's a, you know, we've seen a lot of cutbacks. I mean, I, when I first moved yeah. here, you could walk into a building and have a building full of people and now it's much, much different in most yeah. places, not all, but in most places. But at the same time, I think, you know, people in my industry, we've talked a lot about how if you're young getting into it, why would you want to? And I don't really subscribe to that. I think there are more opportunities, you know, at the University of Wisconsin, for instance, and other schools via the Big Ten Network, there's mm -hmm. something called Student U, where broadcasters can actually get their product, you know, can call games and it's on a streaming service. Occasionally, BTN will rerun those broadcasts of games. So there are opportunities available maybe today mm -hmm. that were not 100 years ago when I was in college. So I, I think it's a little bit of good, a little bit of bad, but the, the corporate part of it is probably the, the less attractive, but there are still a lot of opportunities for, yeah. for young broadcasters, men, and a big change, more yes. and more women yeah. are getting in the field, and that's, yeah. and that's a great thing. Yeah, yeah, and I, I can only imagine how much prep time there is before these games and memorizing the stats and the names and the pronunciation and yeah. everything else, but you do more than just that, right? as in um, other fields of sports casting. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a lot of coaches shows, a lot of player interviews. Um, some guy named Jackson on the football team, I think I bothered <laughs> once or twice <laughs> really? with, with interviews. Uh, Good old Jackson ain't it, here. Yeah, it's a lot of, uh, it, it is a lot of study. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of, it's a loose comparison. You're studying for an exam mm -hmm. and the better, the more preparation you put in, in case of football during the course of the week, the more fun and the easier a broadcast should be because you know the opposing team you know if not inside and out close enough to it where you can identify players very quickly you know a little bit about their backgrounds mm -hmm. uh, it's attending in my case attending practices some broadcasters do that more than others i just think it's important to be around so players and coaches can at least put a face to a name and not somebody who just shows yeah. up at, you know, kick off time on a Saturday or tip off time in a basketball game. In my role too, it's a lot of other, pro could be special projects, voiceovers for the University of Wisconsin, for instance, um, public speaking, there's mm. a, a reasonable amount of that, of that, not an overload. And then some 
some appearances on various radio stations, either Madison, Milwaukee, or across the state. Kind um, of that's yes. more of an as needed basis. Yeah, yeah. He's just in high demand. He's, he's, everywhere. <laughs> he's everywhere. Oh my gosh. Well, after the break, we're going to get a little personal. Are you okay with that? Uh, okay. Uh, awesome. Good. Okay. Good. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you for watching Live It Up with Lee and Krista and Mr. Matt LaPay. We have it all here right now, so we're super <laughs> giddy about this. Oh my gosh, thanks again for coming in today. My pleasure, thanks for asking. Matt, yeah, there are so many uh, viewers right now, especially that want to get into broadcasting, which I love, and you talked a little bit about it earlier, but what is the best advice that you would get, especially the youngsters that want to get into this field? I think be versatile. You know, they say that in sports, the more positions you can play, the more valuable you can be. And I think it's a similar thing, Krista, in yes. with broadcasting, uh, which includes even be writing a little bit. Know how to write if you're writing commercial copy or if you're delivering some kind of a you know voiceover. Be able to write your own material. I think I've always found it easier to read my own material than what someone else has written for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, be comfortable in front of the camera. Be comfortable behind the microphone. It's just a it's a repetition based industry much like sports yeah. you know, the more you do it the more comfortable you can work out the kinks you can get coached up a little bit but the one thing that that i i try to stress and, and brian anderson the the, the brewers mm -hmm. announcer and does a lot of nba and, and college in the ncaa tournament we know each other pretty well we're friends and one of the things that we both try to stress to young people is don't be a jerk be a good yes. teammate it's amazing how that can allow you to get through bumpy parts of your career, whether you're first starting or if it's a new job 10, 15, 20 years into your career. If you allow yourself to be coachable, own your mistakes, but be a good teammate. It's amazing what that can do for you. Now, sometimes you're still gonna have unfair things happen to you, but if you maintain that good teammate type of philosophy, someone else will recognize that and bring you on to work with them. It, it's it's almost almost a fail-safe way yes. to go about it. I love business. that you said yeah. that because do not burn bridges in this broadcasting. Yes. Uh, it's a very, yeah. it seems like a very large world, but it, you know, people yes. know each other. It's, yeah. 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 Yeah, no doubt. I mean, there are times where, where very good people are mm. let go and it stings and it's very unfair, but the more you can take the high road with that, yeah. the better mm -hmm. you're going to look yeah. and maybe the better you can kind of get back at that former yeah. employer by shining somewhere else so it's right. amazing how many times I've seen that pay off for people mm -hmm. over the years yeah and I think awesome. like you said be vulnerable and be like apologetic when you do mess up because the new kids are new kids yeah they're they're, they're gonna mess up and just say oh okay yeah I got that yeah accept yeah. the blame it's a yeah. don't blame my supporting cast if you make a mistake own yeah. it learn yeah. from it and and move forward it's don't let one mistake become two just uh, yeah. learn your lesson and, and yeah. move forward and correct what needs to get correct so true so true and I think in any aspect of life and mm -hmm. any any yes. choice of careers yes. right mm -hmm. yeah Absolutely. Um, I want to go back to a little college athletics a little bit here so do you think it's changed in the recent years probably since like the pandemic so to speak and then I just remember like them being announced when they were you know got their scholarships and everything else mm -hmm. I felt so bad for some of them because it was like you know an empty gymnasium because nobody could go <laughs> cheer them on yeah but um, so that has changed and then also with the NIL yeah, yeah, yeah. that's been the latter has been the that's been the dramatic change mm -hmm. with uh, the transfer portal being able to go from one school to another and play right away yeah. and name image and likeness yeah. NIL as people refer to it um, that has changed dramatically and I, I think in a in a broad sense I'm totally in favor of student athletes being able to make money from their name image and likeness I mean over the years yeah. you know prior to this you would have you know number 34 in the local bookstore and we all know who wears that for Wisconsin ooh, ooh. or whatever <laughs> university we're talking about they are bought by the public and said player does not get a dime for that. Well, now that's changed. Mm -hmm. The problem is a, a lack of regulation because the rules makers originally when this thing started to, to come to fruition, they said you couldn't use it as a recruiting tool. Well, I mean, guess what uh, you know, it's probably used as a recruiting yeah, tool in a lot of yeah. in a lot of cases yeah. not every case but in a lot of cases mm -hmm. so there needs to be more regulation to it mm -hmm. but i do think 
you know, athletes have become more aware in the last probably 10, 20 years of how much of a business college athletics have become. Yeah. If it's the money that television right, the television uh, networks will pay for the rights to televise games, so on and so forth. And an athlete is going to say, where's mine? Yeah. Well, at least now that athlete has an opportunity to, to make some money. And it varies. Some make really good yeah. money like we all wish we could make that kind of yeah. money yeah. not just as a college athlete right. as, as, like today <laughs> right know. but others others it's it's a little bit yeah. more of a struggle so you do have some locker room dynamic yes. potentially that mm -hmm. you have to deal with but I, again I, I do think athletes do des they absolutely deserve yeah. to uh, to make some money off yeah. of their name. oh my gosh awesome. that's for sure mm -hmm. oh my goodness okay stay tuned uh, we're going right. to we're going to be back <laughs> after the break with Lee and Krista and Mr. Matt Lepay. Welcome back into Live It Up with Lee and Krista. And of course, we have this great, handsome guy next to us, Mr. <laughs> Matt LaFay, the voice of the Badgers. Oh, my goodness. We just so appreciate you coming on today and Thank being you. here with us. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Um, hey, I just have one last football question for you is um, what do you think of the new coach and the coaching staff? You know, the, the few times that I've had a chance to interact with him, mm -hmm. and it's been, you know, four or five times, he, he's awesome. He's All been right. awesome. When, when it was known that he was going to come here, uh, I've been in this long enough where I was able to reach out to some people back in Ohio, both at Ohio State and at the University of Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and said, okay, what can you tell me about this guy? And they said, you're gonna love him. And mm -hmm. they, would, they would tell me why. So he's, you know, he's, very, he's very outgoing, he's engaged. He's, you know, from my perspective, he will give me what I need. Probably mm -hmm. not gonna tell me everything he knows, but he's gonna tell me enough so I yeah. can get through a, through a game broadcast or an interview, that type of thing. So I haven't really had a chance to get to know his coaching staff okay. as we record mm -hmm. this, but um, uh, my interactions with Luke Fickle, he has been as advertised and then some. So I think this was, uh, this was a hire that I know caught a lot of people by surprise, yeah. but I think nationally it was, whoa, Wisconsin was able to bring him into the University of Wisconsin. So I think there's a lot of excitement moving forward. Oh, good, good, That's good. Awesome. And I've yeah. heard he's quite the um, players coach as well, where he has yeah. been talking to them a little bit one on one and everything and, and making them feel, you know, safe and and also that he's there to talk to whenever they need him. Yeah, I think, you know, his his Big Ten background, he played mm -hmm. at Ohio State, was was on that staff for a number of years before taking over the program at Cincinnati. And, and there's a pretty well known clip at his time at Cincinnati where after a big win, he goes in the locker room and he's starting to do pull ups, you know, oh. in the locker room and all that. Oh. And he was a great high school wrestler and it, it's still a passion for him and you know he's still young enough and in great shape and he, he's able to interact with these guys and I think even during the bowl practices even though he wasn't really actively coaching he mm. was there every day observing getting to know the players nice. giving the players a chance to get to know him um, it was probably a little bit awkward in those weeks but mm. I think it was very beneficial for him just so the players could say, okay, this is who I am, this is what I believe in, and now as they go, as they approach spring drills and all mm -hmm. that, maybe you can minimize some of the surprises that are ahead. Yes, yes, oh, I love that. Super yeah. good to be supportive. So yeah. Matt, I know you have like a plethora of interviews that you have done, I mean, it's uncanny. Mm -hmm. Is there someone that you're like, yes, this is someone that I envision one day, um, I definitely wanna put on my books? Boy, that's a, that's a great <laughs> question, because I do feel like I've had a chance to interview a lot of like, you know, Hall of Fame caliber mm -hmm. players, coaches, through the course of time. It's one, it's a little off the beaten path here as we sit in Madison, Wisconsin, but growing up in Ohio, I was a big baseball fan, a big mm -hmm. Cincinnati Reds fan growing up. And to do a sit down with, with Johnny Bench, who was a Hall of Fame yeah. catcher, mm -hmm. someone I really admired in, in my formative years, yeah. just getting exposed to, to sports. And I, I think that would be, um, maybe I have to have uh, my friend Andy North set that up because Andy and, and Johnny Bench, I think are pretty good <laughs> friends over the years. But that would be, from a sports perspective, I think that would be Oh, That, that would be, be fun. That would be a, would be yes, a fun interview. Right? I don't know how many original questions I would have for yeah. him, but I would just let him take me down memory lane of those <laughs> big red machine teams of the 1970s. Oh my gosh, oh I love that. And if you weren't doing sports casting and you couldn't like have a show with me and Krista for some <laughs> weird reason, <laughs> we are, yeah. what would you be doing? Even though at the beginning of this interview I talked about not being smart enough to coach or teach, I, I, I have 
my wife is, she's actually faculty at the University of Wisconsin, come from a family of teachers. You know, my sister taught for years and years, and on my wife's side of the family, there were teachers. And mm -hmm. I, I always thought doing that, at, maybe at the high school level, being yeah. a teacher, being yeah. a coach would, would be, I think it would be fun. You'd probably have a lot of challenges, uh, as you would imagine. But that's something that just being around the environment where you can help young people start yeah. to grow in the classroom and outside the classroom. But again, I probably don't have the patience <laughs> or the uh, or the intellect to be able to do that. But if I wasn't <laughs> doing this, that, that would be an avenue. I think you would be amazing. You would do. Oh yeah. my gosh. And is there something still like on your bucket list that you want to do? If it's like, I don't know, parasailing or something yeah, like that? Yeah, right. when you first brought that up, I thought it would be a non-sports related. I am a, I'm a, mostly a domestic traveler my wife goes to oh, she goes overseas on a regular basis she's always trying to get me to go and i think at some point here i need to, i've always thought london paris with a trip to normandy oh wow. nice. i know enough yeah. people who have done that and i'm i'm a little bit of a history buff yeah. and i just i just think that's an important obviously an important part of our history normandy mm. Mm -hmm. um, D-Day, uh, visited Pearl Harbor 30 yeah. some years ago. I just, it, people who have been there, they just talk about no matter how old or young you are, it hits you. Yeah. And I, I just think that would be, that would be something that I should, if I'm going to go to the other side of the world, I think that would be, that would probably be at the top yeah. of my list. Yeah, let us know when our flights are. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> right. absolutely. That sounds like that, a perfect that, trip. We'll bring yeah. wine, it'll yeah. be great. Yeah, yeah. 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 throw Italy in there as well. Yes, yeah. absolutely, yeah. that, that, works. Awesome. that oh. works. We so appreciate you coming on. Thank you, great to be with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very special. And thank you for watching. We'll be right back after the break.